You're starting to see that with the likes of Wellington, BlackRock, Fidelity, Janice Henderson launching their uh, real-world assets, RWAs, on Avalanche. So I think we're just sort of now at an inflection point where traditional finance institutions are willing to put capital on chain. Activity across Avalanche's DeFi ecosystem is near all-time highs and institutions are piling in. So, how did we get here? Avalanche launched in the aftermath of DeFi Summit, when crypto was roaring and innovation was exploding. From the start, Avalanche DeFi came out swinging. Then, the market crashed. And like every project in crypto, it faced a question that separates the survivors from the rest. When the music stops, who's still building? Avalanche kept building. From the depth of the bear market, it rose to become one of the most prominent players in DeFi and a frontrunner in the race to win over institutions. Our story begins in those hard bear market years when Avalanche builders refused to quit. The music stopped, the headlines disappeared, and the price starts were just too depressing to look at. But something else was happening underneath, quieter, slower, and not as headline worthy. Avalanche developers were still here. They just kept on building. But during those times, like, you know, we just stuck to our guns and we told ourselves, hey, we're builders. So we spent most of 2022 creating a new AMM, which is now called Liquidity Book. Apart from Uniswap, V3 Lite, we're also pr proud contributors to like the DeFi AMM space. LFJ, then known as Trader Joe and a Uniswap fork, rewrote its code from scratch. Benki shifted too, building its lending protocol to attract a reliable collateral base. We've, what we've always tried to do is to build products that are sustainable. And obviously, FTX happened. So across all ecosystems, uh, liquidity dried up. People pulled funds out of DeFi, out of centralized exchanges everywhere. Um, but Benki has always survived. The same was true for many other projects across Avalanche. It was the opposite of the mercenary liquidity that defined the last cycle. Across the ecosystem, the tone changed from how much TVL can we attract to how much can we keep. The Avalabs team itself was rebuilding its base layer. So that reduced the cost of Avalanche L1s dramatically before each validator had to stake 2,000 ABAX to validate a sub that now there's a pay-as-you-go fee, which is very low, uh, which enables them to continuously um, validate different Avalanche L1s and, and sort of allow that growth to happen without being so capital constrained in the beginning. Ava Labs, the team building the Avalanche Layer 1, made it cheaper to run an Avalanche L1, and that boosted the ecosystem. The team also rolled out the Avalanche Interchain Messaging System, which made these L1s interoperable. There were also technical changes to make Avalanche faster and cheaper. For developers, the network started feeling more solid. That stability gave protocols the confidence to keep iterating. Lower fees, faster confirmation times, and a modular design. These changes led the way for a customizable, reliable, and performant foundation built for enterprises and institutions. So while other ecosystems leaned into speculation, Avalanche leaned into real money players. The crash had forced everyone's hand. The question wasn't, how do we get back to 10 billion TVL? It's, how do we make the next billion stick around? By 2023, the mania was gone. But under the surface, Avalanche had a sturdier core, a network rebuilt for efficiency and protocols built for longevity. DeFi was smaller, maybe humbler, but it was alive. And as the market slowly stirred again, that foundation was about. By the time markets woke up again, the AVAX ecosystem had quietly transformed. All these heterogeneous L1s launched their tokens on the Avalanche seed chain as well. You can see that the seed chain benefits from not only crypto native activity, but also the activity that's happening around it with each individual L1s. In episode one of the Avalanche ecosystem series, we covered how the Avalanche consensus can achieve sub-second finality via its unique gossip-based model. And the team has kept making improvements so that the C chain can process 4,500 transactions per second. Avalanche ones previously known as subnets, are the result of years of hard engineering. Each one can run its own rules, its own validator set, its own economy, but still plug into the shared liquidity of the core permissionless chain known as the C chain. The goal is extreme customization without fragmentation. The way Avalanche is built initially was subnets. They're now sovereign, so we call them Avalanche L1, so anyone can go create their own blockchain. While other networks were still debating, scaling, and modular ecosystems, 
Avalanche was ahead of the curve. The design lets DeFi protocols stay on the main chain for liquidity, while enterprises or funds could branch out into their own L1s with custom rules and still plug into DeFi. And as both systems matured, something interesting happened. Institutions started paying attention. So the same infrastructure that powered decentralized exchanges was being used to host regulated experiments in asset tokenization. Some would argue that on Avalanche, DeFi is turning corporate and that these ones invited closed systems and centralization. The sense I've gotten from my interviews is that the Avalanche strategy is pragmatic and responds to market needs. And it's also about choice. We, we looked into it a lot, so we played around with it and made some proof of concept. As a DEX, we ultimately felt like it was important to be on the main chain where all the action happened, right? LFJ's decision to stay anchored on the main C chain shows how flexible the system is. The same architecture supports both permissionless DEXs and regulated financial institutions. And the Avalanche crowd has their sights set on the big guy. We're setting our sights on the trillions of dollars across traditional finance to come on chain. That's an ambitious statement. But that's what Avalanche has been building all along. Rails strong enough for real finance to run on. DeFi has battle-tested the Avalanche architecture and now Wall Street is just starting to test the waters. It's TBD how fully they'll dive in. DeFi started moving again this year. Across the industry, TVL and DEX volumes have climbed back to record highs. DeFi summer and even meme coin mania are long gone. But liquidity is returning. Slower, steadier, and a lot smarter. And Avalanche is right there with it. DEX volumes on Avalanche are uh, at the same levels as December of 2021, which is basically the peak. Most of Avalanche's share of trading isn't fueled by new meme coins or yield gimmicks. It comes from routing efficiency, deep pools, projects that survived the winter, and new ones joining. The same networks that once fought to outfarm each other are now competing on execution. We now have a rich uh, DeFi ecosystem. So it's not just uh, lending and, and AMMs. We, we've got uh, perhaps um, and new kinds of uh, stable coins as well from not just, not just US stable coins, but things uh, like in Japan, Korea, it shows the maturity that we've finally come to see in, in crypto as an ecosystem. The new Avalanche DeFi looks nothing like the one from 2021. Mercenary capital has been replaced by stablecoins, RWAs, staking markets, and perpetuals. Aave, Benki, Euler, and more for staking, lending, and borrowing. LFJ evolved into a precision AMM. Newcomers like Black Hole are testing incentive models that reward long-term liquidity. Avalanche has gravity. We spent most of 2022 creating a new AMM, which is now called Liquidity Book. Apart from Uniswap, V3, like, we're also proud contributors to like the DeFi AMM space. LFJ's so-called liquidity book is one example of how Avalanche's DeFi has grown up. Its concentrated bins make trading capital efficient. These aren't copy-paste forks anymore. They're custom tools for Avalanche's own liquidity engine. And those tools are attracting a different crowd. You have a, a different different type of user on Avalanche. There's maybe not as much degen activity on, on Avalanche as, as you might find on, on some other networks. Uh, it's attracted a, a different crowd, a different type of builder, more mature institutional kind of partners. That shift shows up in the data. While other chains were defined by mean point explosions and speculation, Avalanche's flow leans towards DeFi protocols and institutional experiments as the chain's RWA share grows. It isn't louder, but it's a DeFi version built for staying power. One of the nice markets that we have there is a market that allows people to borrow against Fiddle. These are people that have uh, assets uh, in the money market fund, but on chain. And then they want, presumably, they want access to cash or spendable assets without having to dispose of their position in the money market fund. And so what they can do on Euler, on Avalanche, is they can come and they can use that as collateral to borrow against it for short periods of time. That's a very different kind of liquidity. Real assets, tokenized funds, collateralized bought borrowing. Still DeFi, but no longer a game of farm and dump. And yet, it doesn't have to be boring. It's vibrant again. So what can we do on Avalanche today? Avalanche DeFi in 2025 is a working financial system rebuilt on chain from the ground up. Lend and borrow through Aave, one of crypto's leading liquidity protocols now running a fast, low-fee market on Avalanche. 
here you can supply and borrow against stablecoins and crypto with near instant finality. Earn and stake on Banky, Avalanche's homegrown lending protocol. Banky lets users stake AVAX and receive SAVAX, a liquid token that continues earning rewards while staying usable as collateral across DeFi. It's the beating heart of Avalanche's native money markets. Tap into real-world yield through Securitize and Centrifuge. These protocols are bridging traditional finance to DeFi, experimenting with tokenized treasuries, private credit pools, and fund shares that can live on Avalanche's rails. It's a taste of on-chain fixed income, bringing compliant real-world assets into open finance. You can deploy and participate in curated vaults via Lagoon. Lagoon is an open modular infrastructure that lets curators, including DAOs, asset managers, and protocols, launch and manage on-chain vaults. This lets users deposit into managed strategies to earn DeFi yield. You can participate in DeFi rewards via Turtle Club, a protocol that tracks users' on-chain activity and rewards those behaviors. It aims to align users, liquidity providers, and protocols around value creation instead of mercenary airdrops. You can trade on Black Hole Dex, an emerging exchange built on Avalanche that emphasizes locked liquidity. It's focused on building for long-term users. You can optimize your swaps on LFJ, formerly Trader Joe, the flagship Avalanche Dex. Its liquidity book AMN uses concentrated bins to make capital more efficient. Think Uniswap V3 mechanics, custom built for Avalanche's throughput and user base. Borrow against tokenized treasuries on Euler. In one of the first integrations of its kind, Euler's Avalanche deployment now accepts BlackRock's Biddled, the money market fund, as collateral. That means investors holding tokenized treasuries can borrow stablecoins without selling their assets, blending DeFi flexibility with Wall Street-grade instruments. Even niche protocols like XSY are pushing into advanced strategies such as basis trading, where traders arbitrage between spot and derivatives markets, all transparently on-chain. Taken together, these pieces form something bigger than the sum of their parts. Lending, staking, trading, investing, tokenized assets, all connected through one ultra-fast modular network. Avalanche's DeFi is becoming the place where traditional finance learns how to run on open rails. This recent DeFi rally feels different. It's not about chasing the next farm or meme coin. It's about making on-chain finance actually useful for everyone, from individual investors to big financial institutions. And what Avalanche has built positions it uniquely well for the next chapter of on-chain finance. DeFi is transforming before our eyes, and the market is proving that Avalanche saw it coming. These open rails are now meant to support mainstream scale and compliant use cases, not just gambling degens. Every protocol we heard from, the lenders, the DEXs, the liquidity engines, they're all now part of a single foundation built to last. Avalanche is a good contender for those TradFi flows. What Avalanche built, low fees and shared liquidity, plus high customization and control, is exactly what finance outside of crypto wants. Everything I've seen shows that uh, the team the, the foundation and the people that work at Avalanche really care. They're, they've been around and they've been through all the, the kind of the crazy years that we've had in the past and uh, they're still here, still building and still more enthusiastic than ever. We have a fantastic foundation on which to build. That's a real achievement, endurance. Not the flash of a bull market, but the patience to keep improving when no one's watching. The base layer architecture, would you describe the smarter AMMs, fish builds, the lending market that Dan refined? These aren't separate stories. Together, they form the backbone of a DeFi ecosystem ready for its next purpose. What really matters is that we're able to onboard billions of users into crypto as a whole. Avalanche may resist the institutional chain label because it's still tempted to position itself as a generalist chain. But through the bear and bull cycles, it has come out as uniquely positioned to lead in DeFi's greatest chapter yet, the convergence with TradFi, when trillions of assets come on chain. With this renewed focus, Avalanche's volumes are back at previous highs. They're rebounding in line with the rest of DeFi without quite breaking out yet, but we just might be witnessing the very beginning of that breakout. Because across the industry, liquidity is flowing in, and 
as we've described, Avalanche just happens to have built the pipes strong enough to carry it. And that's where we'll go next. From DeFi's rebuild foundations to the real world assets that are about to run on them. This is for informational and narrative purposes only. Always do your own research and consider the risks. DeFi carries significant risks from smart contract bugs, economic exploits, regulatory changes, and market loss. Don't invest more than you can afford to lose.